at Paul Brown Stadium in Cincinnati. It's week two of the NFL on EA Sports. and the Cincinnati Bengals versus Jalen Hurts and the Cleveland Browns. With the Ohio River and the hills of Kentucky just to our right, we welcome you into Paul Brown Stadium in Cincinnati, Ohio. The enthusiasm of this Cincinnati crowd in full effect a moment ago as their Bengals took the field to the delight of this sold-out crowd, and they're all set as they'll match up with the Cleveland Browns. Hi again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gordon to my left, Charles Davis. And Charles, you focus on this Bengal team entering play. They come in off a good win on the road, and now they hit the home opener at 1-0. Meanwhile, for the Browns here, they too were winners last time out, so something's got to give here. I love it when both teams come in off of wins. Great mindsets, and it usually leads to a really well-played game. And this will go as a touchback, and they will begin things at the 25. Here come the Bengals now to take over. They're led by their quarterback from the University of Alabama, Mac Jones. Mac Jones absolutely believed in himself coming out of high school. Went to Alabama despite the fact there were many high-profile quarterbacks already on the roster and blossomed into a Heisman Trophy candidate in his final season with 41 touchdowns and only four interceptions. Steady, consistent as a passer, doesn't have the biggest cannon for an arm, but can stretch the field and lay those passes in on the deep ball. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. These are his numbers from last week's contest. Five catches, 52 yards. And I'd certainly expect them to use him quite a bit because he runs excellent routes, has good hands, and knows how to get open. The throw over the middle, taken in. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Here's the first carry for Austin Eckler. stay for him to maneuver on that run and let's face it it shouldn't be a surprise he's one of the better backs in the league had to come into this game with the idea slow him down oh. and it's out he put it on the carpet and this is picked up by the Browns and his guys are going to take over at the 39 yard line so here are the Browns under head coach Kevin Stefanski They'll be led out by a Heisman runner-up during his college days. It's the versatile Jalen Hurts. And he comes off a tough opening matchup. Threw way too many interceptions in that game. Definitely not the way you want to kick off a new season. So he said to himself, I've got to throw that game out. I'm going to get a fresh start right here in week two. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. Oh, this defense for the Bengals, terrific last week in the season opening victory. I have to admit, I was extremely impressed by what I saw on tape because they stayed in the face of the quarterback the entire game, ended up getting four sacks total, and made it difficult for him to step up and find receivers downfield. Also made it hard for him to escape the pocket and run. Now a dump off here complete, and they'll wind up getting this to the 37. Gain of nine. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. Play action. Here's Hertz rolling to his right. He lets it fly for Lockett. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Tyler Lockett was the target there. They go play action with Hertz, and it's third and short. Complete. It's Henry. And he is going to have a Browns first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert there on third and one. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Here's Hurts to throw. And this one caught by Travis Kelsey. 
And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. And now he's really knocking on the door for 700. That is career catch 699. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Another pass into the reliable hands of Kelsey. Touchdown, Browns! Travis Kelsey, his first touchdown here of the new campaign. And the Browns have taken the early lead. Justin Tucker for the extra point. It's up and through to make it 7-0 Browns. So this drive spans seven plays, and it was finished by the touchdown run from the 15. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. No return there for Harris, and the drive will begin at the 25. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. And last time, the turnover on the fumble, and they were in enemy territory, so that had to be very frustrating. Down on the scoreboard here, can't do it again. You nailed every part of what was frustrating. <laughs> Down on the scoreboard, had a drive going, and pushed it past the 50-yard line, so they thought they were in striking distance. And to come away with nothing, not a good feeling at all, to put it mildly. Now they can't afford to do that again. Yeah, now can they get that bad taste out of their mouth here? Running on first down, Eckler. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. This is a counter play, Eckler. And this Browns defense coming to life. They get him behind the line for a second straight play. Third down, now even tougher. Third and 13 after that loss of a yard. Now Jones. He's going to find and complete it to Renfro. And he'll get this up near midfield, but that's still a few yards shy of the first down. Well, they pick up 10, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. Now Jordan Berry on to kick this one away. Back deep, the dangerous Tyler Lockett. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. Excellent placement. And off that bounce, Charles, I didn't know where it was going to go. It can be an inexact science as to where they place it, but they say the two-yard line. Yeah, I don't know how they really determined that. And let's face it, at the end of that play, one side's going to be happy. The other team's going to be unhappy. It's like, what did they do, shorten the hypotenuse? I mean, how did they figure that out? You know that stuff. You're the smart guy. Oh, no, that's you, partner. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Henry again on second down. And he'll get it up a little shy of the 15. They'll spot him down at the 14-yard line. That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside. And so many times, defenses say, okay, we got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. Oh, that'll be incomplete. Well, he took a shot as he let that go. And it's going to bring up the third down. From the gun, it's Hurts. This will go to Henry out wide. And they're able to get this one across the 35. So many times in my career, I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to throw left side is complete on the diving effort. When I played in the yard as a kid, I used to imitate the spectacular catches that I would see on TV. I don't think I ever imitated one quite that well. <laughs> Come on, give yourself some credit. No, I know better. What we just saw there, that was pretty special. And he fires one that's intercepted. Good positioning, and it's picked off. And the Bengals are going to take over here at their own 22-yard line. The Bengals drive about to get going. 
Yeah, early on, you know, Charles, every game could be called a measuring stick game. But I think when it comes within your division like this, it's a measuring stick game with a little extra intrigue. I would agree with that totally because all division games have a little extra to them. But I like where this game is situated because at this stage of the season, it has that little extra juice. But at the same time, it's not a make or break if this were, let's say, week 15, 16, somewhere in that neighborhood. Throwing Jones. He dumps it to Eckler underneath. So the completion good for six yards. And it'll be a second down. Out of the gun, Eckler running it. He winds up getting only a couple there, down to the 29. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. And Eckler will not get there. Great defense at the point of attack. Going to stop him short of the first down. No gain on the play as we have reached the two-minute warning. Now the Bengals will settle for three as the field goal unit comes on here. This one from 46 yards out. The kick by Bass is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. So the turnover leads to points as they add three there. Yeah, what a sequence there and a nice one for them. They force the interception, put together a little drive, and then come away with three points. Nothing to it, partner. Just do it. And he returns this to the 22. The Browns drive about to get started. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. Of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together Charles a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. And incomplete on the deep ball. Second and ten. Throwing his hurts. That's complete to his running back, Jefferson. And they're going to have this way down in Cincinnati territory. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. They'll throw on first down with Hurts, eluding the pressure right. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Hurts. And that's going to be caught for a Browns touchdown. Debo Samuel there to make the grab. And the Browns are going to tack on to their advantage. Tucker with the extra point, And that pushes the lead up to 11. Five plays there on that drive. And it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. And with him down two scores, you wonder if they might try and put something together, even if it's just to get into field goal range. Well, that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free, and it's second down. Second and ten. Jones quickly a slant to Renfro. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. Here's Jones from the gun on third down. He's got a man open. It's Hunter Renfro. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in this first half. They'll look to throw again. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. To throw on second and 10, Jones. He gets it complete to Harris. 
And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Back to throw again. They'll get this out wide to Eklund. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. So we come upon halftime, and it's the visiting Browns with the lead. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, we'll get you back to you and Charles in a bit. But first, it's time for a trip around the NFL following an eventful opening weekend. Let's see what's happening in week two. We'll begin up at M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore. And they are seconds away from halftime, all tied in that one. We'll stay in the NFC North as we head over to Minneapolis to check on the Vikings at home in U.S. Bank Stadium. And in that one, it's the visiting Dolphins who are out in front. Lamar Jackson with three touchdown passes. Lastly, let's get to the Windy City, see what's happening with the Bears at home at Soldier Field. And they currently trail in that game against the visiting Patriots. Patrick Mahomes, two touchdown passes thus far. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a back-and-forth first half. Who can put it together in the second half? For the answer, we turn it back over to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Browns are going to get the second half kickoff, and they've got this lead as well as we are back and underway. Taking it about the one. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. So here are the Browns to take over. They were winners a week ago against Buffalo, and they lead here with a first and 10. the play fake. Here's Hurts. And his throw is incomplete. Not his best throw there, but where we sit right now in the third quarter, he's had a pretty good game throwing the football. He certainly has, and it's not exactly at the point where we're doing four-minute offense yet, but they've got to think about, I'm not going to say milking the clock, but understanding clock management here on up. Hurts sets up to throw it. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free. And it brings up fourth down. The Browns send out their punter now. And the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Bengals will take over here first and ten. So here are the Bengals now as they get their first possession of this second half. And their defense did its job by forcing the punt to start things out. And now, Charles, can the offense get in gear? I think, partner, you can sense them saying, OK, the first half was theirs. But now let's get the momentum back on our side. We forced a punt. Now let's go downfield and score. If we do that, we'll be set up well for this second half. Now he dumps this off over the middle. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Back to throw. Jones. That's complete to Disley, the tight end. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Off the play fake, Jones. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. Melvin Ingram dropping the hammer off the edge. Now then, after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. 
And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are, you know, make him make someone miss in the open field. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. Returnable for Lockett. A solid 12-yard return after the 55-yard punt. And the Browns will take over with a first and 10 deep in their own territory. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. They'll start on the ground. It's Derrick Henry. And a nice gain there as he'll be taken down just shy of the 20. Jordan Brooks on the tackle. Second and five now. Hurts sliding out of the pocket. He lets it fly for Lockett. And some room to run now. A solid stiff arm. And a great return as he gets this all the way down close to the 30-yard line. He exited the pocket trying to improvise. That was a tough throw, and unfortunately, it wound up in the wrong pair of hands. And Brandon, when you're on the run, sometimes your downfield vision can get skewed just a bit. Now, the beauty of extending a play is sometimes your receivers find their way open, but oftentimes you end up closing down part of the field and bringing those defenders to the ball. And that one was picked off. From the 27, Jones. This is swung out to Eckler. So back-to-back -back plays each get nothing. And that's going to bring up a third down. Looking to throw. Jones, Renfro bringing it in over the middle. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Took till the second half, but finally a red zone opportunity here. They come up first and 10 at the 16. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Trying to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. On second down, Eckler. And he'll be taken down after a minimal pickup, and that will take us to the end of quarter number three. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Six-yard line. The perennial pro bowler Aaron Donald gets the sack. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. He hit his first. Now this from 43. The kick by Bass is good. And a second field goal here cuts their deficit to 14 to 6 now. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. The Browns drive about to get started. Their lead back down to one score after the field goal a moment ago, so they'll be looking to string together a few first downs, likely on the ground. And this is caught right along the sideline. What a job of keeping the toes in bounds there. A big play that time through the air. 31 yards. But first down, Hurts. And that'll be incomplete. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. They'll roll him out right. Oh, no, he lost the football. And this is going to get out of bounds. So they will gain a bit of yardage on the play, actually. And they'll hold on to the football as well. So possession still theirs, but now they face a third down. Now back to throw. Forced out to his left. And yeah, that one's going to be knocked away and incomplete. And that's a nice.
nice job there because you've got to play the ball, not the man winning coverage. That'll keep you away from a lot of needless penalties. And he's able to knock that one away. And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. And that will extend their lead here to 17-6. So that's CD, an important one here in the fourth quarter. And that importance cannot be overstated. All eyes on both sidelines were staring that one down all the way. The significance is that they made it a two-score game. Still lots of time left to go, but likely that was their goal at the start of the drive. Get three points, make it a two-score game, and they were able to get it done. The Bengals drive about to get going. And the complexion of this one has changed a fair amount. That last field goal made it a two-score game, so they need to get points out of this drive relatively quickly. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. It'll be a loss of seven on the sack, and it brings up second. Another try after the first down sack. Jones and running with power here. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple of scores, and they've really got to get some yards in chunks, and they know the defense doesn't want to give those up, but they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? The open man here, Renfro. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as he's able to get eight yards there on third and five. And a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to back some. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked off by Casey Hayward. And the Browns will have the football as this is taken up past the 30. The Browns drive about to get started. On first and 10, it's Hurts. And he will find his man, Samuel. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Well, it may seem a little unorthodox to some people. Got the lead, fourth quarter, yet he's still firing away. I think he believes that's the best way to go ahead and win the game. Yeah, a lot of coaches say, let's just run the football and be conservative. He's sticking to his game play. Now, that is his game, and that's what they're going to ride. Doug Costin on the tackle. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get you reset. And no doubt what they're looking to do is just salt away the final couple of minutes and escape with a win. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. This is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Trying to run for the first with Henry. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. Now Justin Tucker. He has hit from 61 in his career, so he has the leg for this. They'll spot it at the 47, so call it a 57-yard attempt. So they settle for just the three, but clearly right now anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off, but it still ate up time, got points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack him here. Jones. And he's got it. Got his man on the end round. Complete. Now the Bengals urging everybody to get back to the line of scrimmage. And that's into the hands of Eckler. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 31-yard line. First down now, but that clock rolling. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And it is incomplete. Good positioning there downfield to break that one up. Hey, 
Now Jones. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked off by Casey Hayward. There he goes, left side. And he takes this one back into the end zone, and the Browns' defense has a touchdown. That's the story of the game. They've been suffocating all game long on defense. They were suffocating there again in a big way. And they've done it not just by out-athleting them, which is often the case, but by being able to adjust to anything they tried to throw at them and beating them into the punch each and every time. This was a defense that was well prepared. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. The Bengals drive about to get going. Let's just be frank. They're playing for pride at this point. <laughs> that's, that's all that's left because victory, not a chance now. And I can't wait to see how they actually go about doing it because there are a lot of people watching the body language of the guys on the field now. And if they call plays they want executed, they need to do that and do it really well. Otherwise, there could be repercussions. We'll see how they handle the waning moments of this one. And he will find his man on the outside. And a timeout comes in. The whistles blow with three seconds remaining. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. One final shot. They'll look to throw. Oh, Jones has just thrown his third interception. Picked off at the 30. So Cleveland able to come away with the victory here. And we talked so much about the turnover battle determining who wins and who loses. This game, no exception. They didn't turn the ball over at all, and they go on to victory. They look like a smooth operation in this one, didn't they? Because you look at every facet of the game, they handled their business. Offense took care of the football, converted it into points. Defense took the ball away, gave it back to the offense. Special teams right there with them. That's the type of game a coach is going to really love and value. And when they show the film, they have to be careful not to give out too many kudos and kill their motivation going forward. So for the Browns, it was a great all-around performance as they come out of this one with the victory. And they'll get another road date next week as their opponents will be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. <laughs> Meanwhile, for Cincinnati, they'll fall to one and one. And they'll be back home next week for a date with the New York Giants.